Okay, here we are again in Stu's dungeon, doing a little turning. Gonna try another shot here with a bidon. This is a French turning tool. I understand that it's popular in French and uh, the south of Germany as well. That's what Jean Francois Escalon told me, anyways. It's uh, a square stock. This is, I think, 10 millimeters square, so that's just under half an inch. And uh, it's sharpened on an angle here. I'm not quite sure what that is, can't remember, 30 degrees or something. But uh, it's also, you got to make sure it's flat on the back and nice and flat on the sides because that gives you nice sharp corners. And the corners is where you do most of your cutting with the bidon. This is sharp, has to be sharp, has to be really, really sharp. It's that sharp. I can quite easily do a shaving here on the side, not a problem at all. This is really hard wood. I can quite easily raise a shaving like on a good quality wood turning or wood cutting chisel. So it's sharp. Basically, you use it by rubbing this back side here as a bevel, and then you cut with the corners. And you obviously you're doing uh, convex cuts, not concave cuts, so roundy kind of stuff. You can also use it as a skew, basically, and you can use it as a very large parting tool. Got the lathe set around 1800 uh, RPM right now, and uh, I'm going to just show you a couple of cuts here and try to make something that looks like an egg. Maybe. When you're doing these peeling cuts here, it's uh, very good to rock the you know, bidon back and forth like that. If you just jam it straight in, it'll work, but it's a little aggressive here, right? or it's a little, it doesn't cut as well. Just gently rock the, the handle back and forth, right to left a little bit. Kind of makes the corners do the work instead of the centerpiece. So once you get it down close to square, you can see I'm cutting with a corner there. Cut with a corner like that. Or if you're really brave, you can kind of cut with a very middle, like a skew. There's not really much reason to do that. The corners work great. You can. You can get a nice smooth cut out of it. And you can cut, of course, both directions, left and right. And as you can see. Stop that. You can see I got a fairly nice cut. I got a little bit of tear out here because this piece of wood has got quite a bit of a funky grain in it, but uh Normally on fairly straight grained wood, it gives you a nice decent cut. Okay, now I'm going to cut some corners here. So I'm going to make a little like tenon area here. Pressure on the tail spot there. And kind of a base to shoot at there. These pieces of wood are about six centimeters long. It's about an inch and a quarter, something like that. So. You want to cut with authority. Not really a wimpy tool here. You gotta know, what you, know where you're going. You can't kind of piddle around. This is the bottom of my egg, I guess. Make a little. I'll make a little angled kind of base on them here that I usually don't cut away because I don't know, I just, I just set it on that and it kind of looks neat. That's the bottom of the egg. You can see how smooth that cut is. It's shiny in the light there. It is smooth. I think you could probably start sanding it at 240. No problem at all. Okay, I'm going to try to do the other end of the egg here and see if I can get these two ends to line up. That's always been my kind of bugaboo recently is uh, Getting the two transitions to the two angles or the two curves to go together looking eggish. Make sure you keep that. You look right there right now. How this has got this little kind of fuzzy edge there. That little fuzzy edge there tells you that I'm cutting with a corner. 
And when you lose that little fuzzy edge, that means you're cutting with the center. And usually, I'm, in my case anyways, that means I'm getting real close to a catch. So I don't want to be doing that. I want to be cutting with that corner. Give you a cut with the corner. And keep it moving and turning. Oh, that was close. I find the catches are... A little less common. Of course, it doesn't eliminate them, but it makes them less common. They're still looking eggish. Ooh, that's looking not bad. I try to do a couple, three of these uh, every time I get down here in the dungeon, which is usually I get down here almost every day. I get down here for anywhere from an hour to a couple hours. And I try to spend 10 or 15 minutes every day that I am down here making some eggs. It's kind of a good warm up exercise, you know. You should, uh, as turners, you know, I mean, Look at a guy who plays a musical instrument and they almost always have some kind of a warm-up routine and before you start working on whatever you're working on, I think it's a good idea to have kind of a warm-up. So just cut this off. Oh, oops, that one parted right off. Right out of camera. Well, I said before it's not perfect. I got a little bit of a ridge there. That would sand out though easily. But uh, hopefully you can see there in the video that the finish on that is uh, quite smooth. You can see it's uh, shiny there in the light. And uh, wouldn't take very much sanding at all on that. You'd have a not bad little egg sitting there. Anyways. That's about it. I hope that video is a little better than the first one. The first one I took on my old Sony camera. And the video is not so great. This one's a little better. Got the better camera here. Okay, that's it. Thank you very much. See you from Stu's Dungeon.